So we are people. People are in the middle of this model. Disasters were yesterday, people are in this one today. Okay? People have basic needs. All of us have basic needs. And a basic need is, as you would imagine, stuff you need today to survive until tomorrow or next week. And without it, you'll die. Basic physiological needs, such as water and food and shelter and warmth. And probably connecting with other people. I mean, many people say that. And coffee and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't need coffee or else you're going to croak. And basic needs, is that a familiar term? Yeah, it's a World Bank standard throughout the 70s and 80s, pretty much discredited the basic needs approach. But you see it coming back with social protection and safety nets and things all that bad. Often the best we can do is just meet basic needs. If you're in a relief situation, we're meeting basic needs, right? That's what we're doing. So a basic need, you know, I'm not going to write it all out because we'll all get very bored. So food, water, shelter, okay, stuff like that, okay? Basic needs. Now, that's nice, we all need that, but that doesn't define a human being, does it? We're, we're more than just something you put water in or something you feed most of the time. So on one side of the story, we have basic needs. The other side of the story, okay, is what we call assets. It's not a very helpful word, but it's um, an economist word to my best understanding. But over life, you and I build up friendships, relationships, we save money, we lose money, we lose relationships. We have family members, we lose family members, we build houses, they fall down. We do whatever we do. We organize power. We, we do all kinds of things, right? We build up all these things over life. This is what we do, okay? I mean, we, we met yesterday morning now. Now I, I can catch all your eyes and I, I get a smile back. We've built up some form of relationship and I guess you guys all know each other very well, I guess. Yeah, and family and friends <laughs> too well. <laughs> or whatever it might be, okay? So this is what we do. We play the game of life. We build up these things. This is more than basic needs, isn't it? This is more than physiological. Always be a bit wary about categories, all right? But there are broadly six or seven at the moment. Let's discuss them and disagree, please. And then we'll probably add some and let's make it this class 2013. <coughs> Often we talk about social assets, okay? And social assets, as you imagine, are... These things, our ability to interact as human beings, to make connections, okay, social capital. You've probably heard that phrase, social capital? Assets capital, you can use it interchangeably. Social capital, the key to so many things, all right? And we talk about our human assets, okay? Our human assets, our skills, our abilities. You might be an excellent farmer, a really good economist. You might be, have a real skill at sewing or cleaning or, or whatever it might be, or a super skilled surgeon, something like that. You've built up your skills and your abilities, are human assets, okay? Skills and abilities, relationships. So far, so good. Very straightforward, yeah? Good. Um, oh, what, what, what should we do? Financial assets, okay? We talk about our financial assets. That's, as you would imagine, money. Okay, very simple, money, cash. All right, financial assets. We talk about our physical assets, and our physical assets are things that we might own. Might be a car, or a house, or a, or a sickle, or a, or a grain store, or, or whatever it might be. Imagine what it might be, or a laptop, or coffee, or something. Okay? So we own stuff. So our physical assets, coffee's not a very good example, but, you know, stuff that has value to it. Okay? And then we talk about our political assets. Okay? And political assets are more than political parties. All right? It's actually to do with organizing power. Ah, uh, what else? Oh, natural assets. Some people find this a bit weird, and I include myself in that. It might be land and air and the environment around us and how we use those things, okay? Broadly, those are the six ones that people often agree on. About 12 years ago, one big donor didn't, didn't agree that that was on the thing, and there was a big discussion about that. They added it. But maybe there's another one. Maybe it's cultural assets. Maybe it's something else, culture. Maybe it's, it's religious assets, faith-based. Maybe it's whatever it is. Who cares? It's a model. It's not fixed. It's not fixed in stone, yeah? Things always change, and if it didn't change, it would be odd. I was teaching this two weeks ago in um, South Africa, would you believe? And we had a big discussion that cultural assets should be part of the story because culture was super strong there. And uh, you probably agree, most of you are nodding. Let's, let's stick it down, right? Let's stick it down, let's put cultural. Let's have a list of 20, maybe that's unhelpful though. Okay, you know, just be aware if a model's really fixed, don't you think? This is just a side point, a side observation. Okay, so this is it really. Already you can see there's overlap. Physical, financial, they sound very similar. Fine, it doesn't really matter. They all overlap. We're trying to describe complex life in very simplistic terms. 
So, so we agree. Okay. Assets, according to this model, they do two things, okay? Two big things, all right? One is reduce vulnerability. The other is build capacity, okay? So this is central thinking. Caroline Moser, Mary Anderson, some of the readers you might have come across, it's all this. 20, 30 years, it all boils down to this. This is the bottom line of everything, <laughs> of development and of emergencies. This is the aha moment, okay? Uh -huh. All right, so one is they reduce vulnerability. Okay, if you imagine disasters as a big external threat, okay, that's a disaster, boom. Okay, let's put boom there. This is the new, <laughs> the new word. <laughs> okay, often we call it shocks and stresses. This is a different term. Shocks, a rapid onset thing, a shock happens quickly, a rapid onset disaster. It might be a stress. A uh, stress might be um, HIV. It might be chronic alcoholism. It might be, it might be anything. It might be unemployment. It, you know, stuff that may be no less awful but creeps upon you. A drought, like we talked about yesterday. So a stress, it builds up. Or a shock, rapid onset, that's a boom. Okay, so the, the visualization here is, this is external, okay? And what stands between you and the bad thing are your assets. This is your wall, okay? This is your wall, this is your thing that pushes against, right? This is the wall. This is what's going to protect you against bad stuff, all right? Yeah. So very obviously, if you, obviously, if you've got a well-built building, less likely to fall down. If you've got knowledge around how HIV is contracted, you can do something about that, okay? If you've got money, you can send your daughter to hospital, whatever it might be, and so on and so forth. If you organize yourself politically, maybe you can lobby for land ownership or whatever it might be in a poor area. Okay, all these things, bro again, broad, this is a broad model, right? Broadly speaking, reduce your vulnerability. The stronger the assets, the less vulnerable you are. That's it. It's as simple and as complicated as that. All right? So the business of development and disaster recovery and DRR and resilience and blah, 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 everything is around building up individual assets and family assets. We can call this the household, communities, the neighborhood, individuals, the village, the house, the course. It's about building up these assets. Fit. Yeah.